Imagine having something stolen from you, something worth a lot of money, and then having to pay the police almost $2,000 to get it back. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It happened to a friend. We've got the story. You are going to want to hear this craziness in just a few minutes. Glad to have you back. Let's start things off with something we so rarely do, positive, uplifting stories. Okay, I'm I such like a it. cynical, negative person. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because I've been working on trying to be a better human being. Wow, really? Yeah, I am. I'm practicing smiling more. I'm just practicing trying to do nicer things, reach out to people I don't talk to often because you read so much about that stuff and then you don't do it, then one day it's too late. Huh? So you're, let's hear this positivity. You're not sick, are you? I'll judge. If I like it or not. It's not about me, but I mean, so many times, you know, you look online, wherever you go, Reddit, whatever, and you see all these crazy stories about people telling the horrible customer service they got mm -hmm. from whoever. So last weekend, Katie and I, she got home late, and so we didn't want to cook, so we ordered dinner from Cheesecake Factory. And oh, I, delicious. Yeah, when I say late, like 10.30, 10.30 at night. So we ordered our, our meal, two simple meals and a couple of slices of cheesecake. Mm. So the guy... Brings our food. He gets there and he hands me the bag and he's very friendly. Hey, hope you enjoy your night. Enjoy your dinner. Thanks very much. Off he goes. I go inside, open the bag. And if you've ever ordered food someplace, you know this feeling. You realize not everything's in there. It's like, son of a bitch. And, and immediately I'm angry. What'd they leave out? The cheesecake. The most important part. <laughs> right? It's like the dessert, man. You're ordering from Cheesecake Factory. So I, so I was upset. I was like, I should have checked it. I got to start making these people wait at my doorstep and let me check before they leave. Yeah. Wasn't his fault. So I texted him on the app and said, hey, man, I don't know. Maybe you have a second bag that, that got disconnected or wasn't taped to it, and it's got our cheesecake in it, but we didn't get our full order. And within just a couple of minutes, he texted back and said, hey, you know what? I don't have it. That, I think it's a restaurant mistake. They didn't give me two bags, but I'll tell you what. Let me go back to the restaurant right now. I'll call them, and if they have it, they're ready. I'll go back and get it for you. Wow. Now, if the story, That's above and beyond. Seriously, if the story stopped right there, just him offering to even do that would be shocking to me. Because no one has ever done that. And we've had our orders messed up and a lot. That shows you, whoever that is, if I had a business that was hiring, that's the kind of person I would want to hire. Well, watch this. It gets better. So he texts and says, I you know, text back, I called the restaurant and they do have it. They just forgot to give it to me. So I'm going to run and get it for you and I'll bring it back. So we live probably 15 minutes, 20 minutes from this okay. restaurant. So it's, if this is a half hour of his night yes. round trip to do this thing. And I said, if, I really appreciate that. I'd like to tip you, you know, extra. For, for doing this. It's really cool. And he sent back, you don't, that's not necessary. You guys already tipped me generously. It's fine. So then I get a call from the, like the big people, the DoorDash customer service people. Yes. And she's like, hi, uh, Miss, Mr. Randall, we understand that you didn't get all your order. So we're going to refund you for your cheesecake. Okay. And I said, well, now wait a second. I said, the, the driver said he would go back and get it. And she was like, well, he can't do that because we can't pay him because this order is technically shut and complete. So we can't, so we can't do that. And I said, well, he said he could, because he texted me and told me he was going to do it. And even she was surprised. No, oh. she was like, "Oh, she's oh well." I mean, if if he said he would do it, then that's fine. Oh, okay, great. So this is everything's okay. And I said everything's great. Hang up with her. Within a few minutes, he's he's texted me back and said, "I'm on my way back. I got your cheesecake." Nice. And I said, "Well, you know, send me your cash app or your Venmo so I can hit you up." And we tipped him again. And he said, "You really don't have to do that." Came oh. back and handed off the bag. What with a kind a, guy. A smile on his face, and it was great. Two things I take away from that. Number one, that was a guy that was terrified to go home that would do anything to keep working. <laughs> it's possible. I and, don't know. And number two, what kind of cheesecake was it you ordered? Lemon meringue cheesecake. Mm. I see. I love lemon. So. Uh, I, if I was him, I would have stepped up and said, I'm not coming back for that. <laughs> to be a, if you if upgrade your if flavor. If it's Oreo cheesecake, caramel <laughs> cheesecake, maybe, but lemon meringue, no. Yeah, well, he You're did, on your own. He did it. And I, I told him, I see, when he dropped it off to me, I said, you've made two fat people very happy. <laughs> No, but it was it was just such a, a shock because, and I'm not saying that we get bad customer service regularly from yes. these people because normally the, the drivers are always very polite. Thank you. Have a good night. Here's your food. But no one in the ultimately many times that there have been mistakes, no one has ever offered to go back and fix it. That's very cool. So I just thought that guy was great. I just want to give Brandon a shout out because uh, he's awesome. We love you, Brandon. Yeah, you can bring you. me cheesecake any day. I'm not going to pay for it or tip you. <laughs> But I'd like some cheesecake. See, that's the difference. See, there are people like you in the world. And yeah. So here's what I'm up to. Luther on Netflix. Can't wait to watch this. If you ever watch this TV series, he's basically all you need to know is a cop that always goes over the line. That's him. So in other words, he's a cop. Yep. 
I'm kidding. The old <laughs> old school detective cops. Yeah. And it's a great series. It is a great series, but you don't have to have seen the series to enjoy this movie. They explain oh. who he is and everything if you pay attention to the dialogue. So the movie I thought was fantastic. It's a little out there toward the end, but it's got a real seven vibe to it. Okay. So dark and yeah. gritty and and speaking of seven, I know David Fincher is one of your favorite people. He Absolutely. did that movie, correct? Yes. And his new movie, they are comparing to seven. Yeah, it's called say, Killer. So he's going back to his seven roots. I think he's got maybe the same screenwriter. Ah, I think okay. it's the same screenwriter from seven. And and it's and it's hard because I I've, I'm seeing it blow up on the internet. His fans and fans of the show Mindhunter yes. on Netflix, Great which is show. we've recommended before, it's fantastic, are so upset that it's not going to come back. And he said he he put he put a pin and he said it's it's over, it's done. They won't. Hey, this much. The show didn't get the returns for the amount of money they had to put yeah. in, and I, and I have to move on with my life. I, you know, I appreciate your passion, but you know, it's, it's over. <laughs> I wish he had just said, okay, there's going to be a cheaper version someone else is going to do, and I'm going to turn it over to him because I would just like to see the story completed. On the one hand, yes, but on the other, then I think, for me, it becomes what Bosch became when they took it off Amazon and put it on Freebie yeah. and becomes not as good. Okay. I really want his hand in it because he has a knack. For, for that kind of storytelling. Mm -hmm. I, but, Agreed. But, but I'm super excited about The Killer. Yes. Uh, Michael Fassbender is the star of that one. So I don't know when that comes out, but Luther is available now on Netflix. Check it out if you like those kind of movies. Excellent. Uh, we haven't watched anything like new, new, like nothing we haven't already talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, we are still, we, we have caught up now on Shrinking. I don't know how many episodes are in this first season. I am not caught up, but I love the show. It is exceptionally good. Uh, the storytelling is great. The acting is great. There are a couple of people I've never seen before who I love. Uh, I love the girl he works with, in, the other therapist in the office. I think mm -hmm. she's hilarious. I love his friend who's the lawyer. You, yes. You, okay. So if you haven't seen it yet, if you have Apple TV, highly recommend. Uh, we rewatched The Hangover the other night just for fun. The Hangover will always bring back cool. great memories for me because it's just one of those that we took all of our friends to see that multiple times. And <laughs> there was to show you what it was like in the heyday with us when we were young, Everybody we went and saw that was in radio and stuff, we'd go see that movie. Greg was with us one of the times and stuff, and it's just, nobody walked out of there going, it was too unbelievable. Every one of us walked out of there going, yeah, I could see that happening. Yeah, I, We watched it the other night, and, I, and I, I said out loud, I said, except for the tiger, I could see everything in this movie happening to us. And I said, and, and frankly, a lot of this kind of stuff has happened to us. <laughs> True. Just saying. Nobody's married a hooker yet. Yet. We're still young. I think yeah. we have other things we can still accomplish. So that was fun. And then The Last of Us, for those who are fans, and I know there are many, it, it got really good numbers. They showed the season finale against the Oscars, and it still did very well. It was something. Everybody's up in arms now because there's going to be a time jump to season two. To, I guess the second game version right. uh -huh. came out, and there's a time jump, but she, it's going to be the same girl. Yeah, they, they were upset. The, the creator said, we are not recasting Ellie. It will be. They said the only way, the only way we would recast this is if she decided she didn't want to play the role anymore. Then we would be forced to do it. But otherwise, we'll be able to handle this. They, they, the guy was like, "Trust me, we're gonna, be, we're gonna do it right. We've been doing it right. We're gonna continue to do it right. Some things are gonna be very much like the game. Some things will, will go outside that a little bit. But we will continue to be what you have come to love. Okay, and I trust him. Because I wonder how many versions of the game there's been. So, like, how many seasons they're thinking well, about? I, my, I, I really want it to have an ending. I don't want it to be like Walking Dead, where it's like, okay. I am not the, an expert on the game. I'm fairly certain there are only two that I know of. But they said they were going to stretch out part two over several seasons. So, I don't know okay. if this if the second ver, you know part of the game is much more involved. Okay. I haven't played it. Don't know. If you're a gamer and you have that information, drop in the comments for us so we aren't so stupid. Yes. Thank you very much. It's talking about entertainment, you know, we, we spend a little time on the Oscars beforehand. We're going to spend just a little bit of time after. Uh, coming up in just a few minutes, we will each have simply our own three-word Oscar recaps. Oh, okay. So it's nice and short, real, real easy. But before we get to that part of it on the Oscars, you have a home state connection to a big Oscar winner. Yes, uh, and I don't know the guy's name. You'll have to tell me. You know all this stuff. But the guy that, one of the co-writers of that everything, everywhere, all at once, or whatever it's called, that yeah. won everything. Mm-hmm. He's from Scottsboro, Alabama, or Gunnersville, Alabama, and uh, his parents or something live in Birmingham. So I think he was born in Birmingham. Maybe they live in Gunnersville yes, or something like that's that. Something like that. So near my hometowns, where the guys, but the part that I love of this story, my mother's the source of all this information, by the way. Real quick, it's the Daniels. They call him the Daniels because there's two of them. Gotcha. And he's Daniel, I think it's, is it Scheinert? Maybe. I'm not trying to pronounce his last name, but that's the tall, his, skinny one. Yes, his suit. That he wore to the Oscars. Now, remember, everybody, it's who are you wearing? What is, is no, it fancy, fitted, fancy fitted perfect? 
he got from unclaimed baggage in Scottsboro, Alabama, which is a store that I didn't know was still there. But when I was a kid, about once every two years, our family would get in the car as an hour drive, go to Scottsboro, Alabama to unclaim baggage because whatever was found in suitcases that never got picked up, they would just go in there and sell. I think it's, I think it's the only store of its kind in the country. Really? I think. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure I read that that was accurate. So there would be everything in there from back then, pocket knives to, you know, clothes, whatever. It was in suitcases. People, oh, there are makeup bags. I mean, everything. As mom said, he bought the suit there a couple of years ago. When he started having to attend more high-class functions, he needed something. So he went and bought it, and it fit. So he, he broke it out for the Oscars and said, let me see if this still fits. He thought it still looked good on him and said, I'm wearing this to the Oscars. I love that. I always thought that if you and I got to go to a big time award show like the Oscars, the Emmys or something worth the red carpet, I would love to go rent a tuxedo. <laughs> yeah. So that when people, oh, what are you wearing? Oh, this is a rental. <laughs> got this at the tuck <laughs> shop. Looks pretty good. Tant and Tant, Gadsden Mall. <laughs> wow. That's a pull from our childhood. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> so congratulations. Uh, personally, as far as that, the win and all the wins that that movie got, I think they're well-deserved. I mean, it's always tough because there are always other actors in movies who deserve to win. Yes. It's just not how it goes. Now, as far as recapping the show itself, I mean, it was a long show. Again, I missed the first about hour, honestly. But what I saw of Jimmy Kimmel, I generally liked. I didn't I didn't like some of the shtick in the audience. I thought that was... I liked Jimmy Kimmel, but it seemed forced, the audience stuff. Like, very uncomfortable. Because I don't think any of them have the strength to be made fun of to their face. <laughs> True. <laughs> so I think they should have stuck with pre-recorded comedy bits yeah. and then just well, dipped along. Here's our, a real quick, each of us have three moments that we'll use one word to describe and maybe a quick description of, of the Oscar thing. So Chris, why don't you go first? Lady Gaga, the one word, brave. Thought it was brilliant to go without makeup and not dressed up for her performance on a night where everybody's so hoity-toity. Yeah. Two, the Hugh Grant, Ashley Graham red carpet exchange, mm. overblown. Yeah. He wasn't trying to be rude. Brendan Fraser, karma. There's a guy that got blackballed, but has been kind and humble even after he was blackballed out of Hollywood and had his big comeback and was rewarded for it. Love it. Okay. Uh, mine begins with Tem, some musical artist. I don't know who she is. Rude. That headpiece that she had on. I understand you want to stand out on the red carpet or whatever, but you have to have your designer build something that you can take off so that mm -hmm. you're not ruining the biggest night for these people, everyone who's sitting behind you. Yep. Second, his name comes up again. The Hugh Grant, Andy McDowell introduction thing where they were having fun. <laughs> yes. Hilarious. My favorite moment of the night, I think, that I saw. I thought Hugh Grant was hysterical. Funny. I loved it. And third, the Harrison Ford, Key Huy Quan, oh. the hug, heartwarming. Mm. And then, of course, now the memes are everywhere, that, you know, and we'll, you can see it here. That back in the day hug, current hug, and I just his excitement when Harrison walked out on stage. He, I mean, do you think they had to know in their heart when it, when Harrison Ford walks out to present Best Picture? How is it not going to be everything, everywhere, all at once? It's like they knew that that connection was there. I don't know. It was heartwarming though. It really was lovely. So that's that's it. That's all the time we're going to spend on the Oscars. Which brings us to this story that is going to blow your mind. My lovely wife, her boss, son. Yes. So my wife's boss's son. I don't know how old he is, 20s, I think. He had a Harley Davidson, and he's enjoyed it, loved it, but then he got to where he wasn't really riding it. So at his apartment complex, they had an, a motorcycle storage unit, basically, like a cage where okay. they could, anybody could bring in their stuff. Yes. Parked his Harley in there, locked it up, great. Let the insurance lapse because he wasn't riding it, so he didn't feel the need yes. to pay that. Ends up get, getting stolen. So the cops tell him right out, and as you would expect, look, man, the chances of us getting this back... Slim. Slim to none. It's, it's a Harley. They're, they're going to chop it up and get rid of it. And, uh, you know, we'll do our best. We'll see what happens. A year later, just in the last few weeks, cops call him. Hey, guess what? We found your bike. Now, it's mostly taken apart. It was just, it was the frame and the engine. Wheels are gone. Everything else is gone. But frame and engine are here. We've got it recovered for you. So, hey, that's awesome. And the kid's like, oh, fantastic. Great. I'd love, I'd love to get it back. We bet you would. And you only have to pay $1,700. What? They are charging him almost $2,000 to retrieve his property that was stolen from him a year ago. It's in impound. To get it out of impound, you have to pay $1,700. But wait, there's more. They tell him, you have by this time to pick it up or we start adding money on every day that you, penalties. Don't, that you don't come get it. So penalties on top of the $1,700 to retrieve the merchandise that was stolen from you in the first place. So he's being extorted by the police force in this city. 
This is, I mean, there's so many problems with our government, but this is one of them. It's out west. I don't know if this is in, in every city, if this is how they do it, but in this particular city, it is how they do it. And so then he, he says, well, look, in that case, I don't want it back. Yeah, just keep it. Just keep it, trash it, do whatever it is you do. Oh, no, no. It doesn't work that way. If you don't pick it up by whatever date, we will take you to court, basically, or send you to collections for the money you owe us for the impound of the bike that was stolen from you. I mean, have you ever, and maybe you have, if you have a story like that, uh, get in the comments for sure, but I, I couldn't believe my ears. It's like, okay, look, I don't want the bike. I'm not going to pay $1,700. Oh, yes, you are. We're getting this money. We are, they are black. They are the mafia. That's unbelievable to me. I just. Was, it make you not even want to report something being stolen. Yeah. It's like, why, what's the point? Because if down the road you, you find it and you're going to charge me to get it back. Oh, wait, I, I forgot about the cherry on top. He also. <laughs> Oh, no. He ended up getting the bike back, but he also had to pay the tow truck to haul it because it's not drivable. Wow. So he had to pay the, the money that they were extorting him. And then on top of that, he had to pay a tow truck to go get it and take it back to his place where he's going to park a piece of junk mm. that he can't use anymore. Generally, I like to support the police and say, hey, I appreciate the job you're doing, but whoever's got that system set up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's and that's beyond just, you know, individual people, obviously. That is how that is their thing. That's what yeah. they've done. And so somebody made it a terrible I mean, I get you got to make money. Give out more tickets. That's what you do. We all expect you to do that. But extorting money from someone who has been a victim of a crime blew my mind. Unreal. So that was the crazy story. Hope you enjoyed it. All right, let's, let's wrap up. We're going to do this uh, internet thing a little differently rather than just random stuff. We each go around and find stuff. We're not saying these, these are current. They're just things we have seen that we love and we compile our top five memes of the week. And to be different, we're going to start at number five. Ooh, okay. Going up to number one. That rarely happens. Here we go. Number five. Wow. Possibly the most important apostrophe I've ever seen. Yeah, that one will give you a second to find it. There you go. <laughs> Love that. Number four. Feeling guilty about your kids watching too much TV? Just mute it and put the subtitles on. Boom. Now they're reading. There you go. Now every kid will have an out. Forget memes. That's just solid parenting. Yes, where, where solid were you, parenting. Where were you with that advice when my kids were still living at home? Wow. Number three. The doctor asked me to spend at least one hour per day on the treadmill. I love that. This is one I can relate to. Solid. Number two. <laughs> this face is, okay, I'm not a bird specialist, but I'm pretty sure that this couple just had a fight. <laughs> Man, does that say it all. I mean, it's perfect. <laughs> and for us, our number one meme of the week that we saw and loved the reason these toys are critical as kids. Yes, yes. I used to wonder, like, why? Are, I mean, these toys don't make any sense to me, but that right there proves it. You know you've seen it, too. Maybe not a mattress. Maybe a giant TV box out at Best Buy or something like or that. Or a couch. Couch. Take your pick, but that's the stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Uh, wrapping it up for this one, uh, the next show, which will be out in just a few days, we have a very special guest. She's yes. a young up-and-coming country star, and she is going to be joining us uh, for a chat and we'll get to know her, and you can get to know her and get to know her music as well. Please do us a favor. Share this video. Also, follow and subscribe. Yes, and, and, and give us a like. I know a, a lot of watching. If you watched it and you liked it, make sure you hit that like button. That's super important to mm -hmm. us, so please let us know that you liked it. Don't forget the Etsy store. Link there uh, in the new items up in the description. We got some new items in there. If you have been, if you've already shopped at our Etsy, uh, Etsy store, you should have received a little coupon. Yes. We're offering you a special little deal on something. Wink, wink. So make sure you check your inbox for that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.